What's up, guys? Professor Jay here at Organized Biology, and today we are going to go through ATP in approximately three minutes. So buckle up and let's rock and roll. So first off, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Big scary word. This is why it's named the way it is. There's an adenine base. I drew in black. There's a ribose sugar, a pentose sugar, because it has the five points. And then it has three phosphate groups. Adenosine, combining these two. Tri, three, phosphate. So it's pretty simple when you think about it. Now, if I cover up these two phosphates, you'll notice that it also looks like a very common nucleotide molecule that we see in DNA. We have our nitrogen base, pentose sugar, and a phosphate. So ATP is actually a nucleic acid because it has base, sugar, phosphate. But the biggest difference is there's three phosphate groups. And here is the biggest key to ATP, this third bond between the phosphate. Now, we call ATP the energy currency molecule for all life or for all cells. Now, why do we call it the energy currency molecule? Well, let's think about it. In the United States, we use the US dollar. In Europe, they use the euro. In Great Britain, they use the pound all different forms of currency, but you have to use the proper one depending on where you're at. And in your body and basically all life forms, they have to convert all of the energy that they eat into the usable currency molecule, which is ATP. Now, what do I mean by energy? Well, energy simply is the ability to do work or cause change. If you are a physicist, you know that work is equal to applying a force over a distance. So force times distance, which literally means we have to move something. We have to apply a force on something over a distance. So something has to move. Well, if we look at ATP, the one main part of this molecule that is going to move is this phosphate group because there's a lot of stored energy in this last bond. And what happens is, think of these bonds as rubber bands. So there's elastic and they're stretched out and there's a lot of stored energy in between these, right? So if I were to break them with potentially an enzyme characterized by these scissors, guess what will happen? Whoop, second time's a charm. Whew. <laughs> so that third ATP flew off a lot of kinetic energy, and that flying off of the phosphate hits something which moves something, which makes a molecule, which breaks a molecule down, in essence, helping you live. So that is why ATP is the cellular currency of energy. I hope this was helpful.